As all of you who have followed me in Results for Humans for a while know is that I have a very specific problem, which is that I grew up basically in a Tesla world, right? I grew up with my dad working at HP, which meant self-organization and all that was completely natural to me. I had to understand though that for most organizations this isn't natural at all. It's a huge leap of faith to go from a hierarchy to a network organization. This is why I'm super excited our guest today on the show for Leaders in Cars Getting Coffee, Arko van Brackel, the CEO of Semco Style Institute. Semco Style Institute helps organizations to go from complete combustion engine hierarchy to complete electric, complete self-organization and builds bridges. That's why today's car is not a Tesla, sorry Elon, today's car is a BMW i8 Roadster. This car is a hybrid and it's sexy as fuck. Right? So people actually want to drive that thing. You want to go on that ride from a combustion engine with electrics and maybe, just maybe, then make the leap to full electric. So in our analogy, Semco Style Institute is the kind of company that helps you to make it safe for you to go from combustion engine hierarchy to fully electric, fully self-organizing. So I can't wait to get into this bad boy and I'm not a big BMW fan, so this for me is a first, first BMW. But um, from the way it looks, I think we'll be fast friends. And there's an additional benefit to this car, which is the following. Normal cars, even the Tesla, the Model S anyways, opens like this. But we know that super sexy supercars open like this. So in the spirit of John DeLorean and his masterpiece, the DeLorean DMC-12, we're opening the gull wing doors and stepping onto the bridge of the future. Can't wait to have Arco in here and talk about building bridges. Come on board, let's get some coffee. You don't have to film, we are filming. <laughs> Filmen terwijl je gefilmd wordt. Briljante auto. Wat een opkomst. We gaan lekker een dagje rijden. Leaders in cars having coffee. Hold on. Let me. Cool man. There's no graceful way to get out of here. Hold on. You, you want it? Yeah, yeah. An electric Beautiful. DeLorean? Yeah, electric This is DeLorean. as close as it gets, right? As close as it gets. Beautiful. Beautiful. Amazing. <laughs> Got the Goldwing Gold. Have you ever been in one of those? No. So yeah, sitting in it, but not driving. So um, yeah. And, and you know why I chose it? Two things. First of all, you told me that you love the DeLorean, but you yeah. want an electric one. So yeah, I yeah. thought this is the closest. Yeah, it's very close, yeah. And the you second is, yeah. everything that we're doing with organizations, you with Sam Costa and we with yeah. RH, there always has to be this hybrid. There has to be this bridge before we go fully electric because yeah, yeah. they're huge organizations and they want to be moved, right? Should we get some coffee? Yes. Let's do it. Yeah. Cool. Let's see if you have a more graceful way to get in than I do. <laughs> ah. Ah. ah, man. Love it. Shall we uh, close it? Yeah. Wow. Right? Awesome. Ah, this is an amazing car. So, did I uh, stop? It's actually one of yeah. my uh, favorites. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So I love uh, the hybrid uh, technology as well. So. Yeah. So, I'm going to be a German CEO for a moment. Okay. I have. 5,000 people under me, we, yeah. we make advanced German engineering yeah. shit, whatever we, it is what we do. And you have five minutes in my car with me because we're just on a weekend, right? The wife let me out for five minutes. Okay. Now I've heard about the Semco style thing, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah? So first of all, it's the Dutch and the Germans, it does not work out very well, yeah? And I hear your, your concept comes from Brazil, yeah? That's even crazier, yeah? They, don't, they can't even win World Cups anymore. Sell me, why should I do this? Yeah, well, um Every time is up, I'm kicking you out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you should do it uh, because uh, it's fun. That's perhaps the best way uh, to describe Look, it. This is the worst. This is the worst way with a German. Know, man. We're I not know, having I fun, know, man. I know. We're not having humor. What, no what am I getting? Am I getting uh, more money out of it? Do what, yes. What's, what's the, the thing? No, well, it depends what you focus on. That's really an interesting discussion I had with uh, Ricardo where we started. Uh, I said, well, you know, if you change your company to Semco style, the customer satisfaction will go up. Ricardo said, no, 
that's not necessarily true. <laughs> I said, why not? Spotify, Netflix, uh, Cool Blue in the Netherlands, Zappos, these companies all have an amazing customer experience and they all inspired on the Sam Costel. Yeah. Yeah. Ricardo said, but if everyone decides that making money is more important than happy customers, the customers won't get happier. And that actually is interesting. And we found out that actually that what you think is important, that what you focus on, that will happen. So suppose that um, that you as a, the CEO of your 5,000 people decide that you uh, really want to cut the costs and bring the customer satisfaction up or want to get the sickness leave percentage down. And if 5,000 people start focusing on three, these three KPIs, then that will happen. Because if 5,000 people start thinking, ah, how can we cut the costs? The costs will go down. And if 5,000 people start thinking, mm, how can we make it a bit more healthy? They will become more healthy. As simple as that. That's how collective intelligence works. So whatever you focus on will happen. I had a, as, as I told you, we had a wonderful ride with Clovis. La Moustache. Yeah, La Moustache. La Moustache, yeah. the, the architect behind uh, Ricardo. I or the still have met him. Sorry? I still haven't met him. We should take a trip to Brazil I, together. Yeah. And because yeah. there, we need to capture some stuff from him. He is, I said he's my Yoda, right? Yeah. He is also looks like Yoda. And he's as kind as Yoda and as powerful as Yoda. So here's the thing. When I was there and I talked to him and he said, Heiko, you can't copy what Semco did. And Ricardo for a long time resisted to even call it a method or anything because yeah, there's no template, right? And when we go to German CEOs and they say, well, tell me the five steps I have to take to yeah. transform my company. Give me a timeline and give me a budget and I shall do it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, well, that doesn't work like that. At Semco, we started wherever there was an opportunity, like cafeteria food, right? That was the first one, then color of the overalls. Yeah. And we pushed the authority to make changes to the people wherever it presented itself. Yeah. But how the fuck do we sell that? Because from us, they want plans, roadmaps, right? Uh, how do you do that? How do you, how do you t tell this CEO, oh, we're just going to tackle whatever. By the way, your customers might be unhappy or later, <laughs> you know, like, depending on what you focus on. How do you, how do you get in bed with them? What, what, what convinces them? Um, well, actually, what you point out here is exactly our biggest marketing problem because um, we, we are not dogmatic. It's not really a methodology. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ricardo always makes the joke because if you try to copy Semco or the same as copying Apple or copying Google, yeah. it will be exactly the same as that I would go now to the hairdresser with a picture of uh, Brad Pitt and say, well, Frank, my, my hairdresser's name is Frank. Frank, I want to look exactly like Brad Pitt. Well, whatever Frank will try, whatever he will do with my hair, I will never look like Brad Pitt. And maybe that's because... better. I have this wonderful hairdresser when we go to Switzerland in the summer, I always go to the same one. And because I suck at explaining what the hell I want, I mean, look what I did my hair color, that's why I'm explaining it wrong. And I showed her a picture of um, uh, Robert Downey Jr. Ah, right? And she looked at yeah. him and she said, oh. I can help you, I can help you with the hair, but the rest, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's the whole point. Um, you'll always remain yourself. So yeah. what we found out is that uh, being truly agile and being truly resil resilient is using your own DNA, your own talents, your own quality, your own and the quality of your own people, and um, make make or create the psychological safety that people feel comfortable in bringing the best of themselves to the table. That's what you basically do. That if if one thing is really uh, crucial in the Semco style is creating this psychological safety. I have a hypothesis. I want to know what you think about it because yeah. the roadblocks, right? Yeah. I think the biggest roadblock in organizations is on one side how work is organized. Obviously, if people have a choice what to work on. Like you mm -hmm. said, if we want to solve this problem, do we have the authority to just solve it? Mm -hmm. But the way money is distributed in the organization, the way um, power well, flows in the organization, if we can change the logic of that, do you think that would go a, a yes. long way? Oh, it would really help. Um, actually, um, I think there are more roadblocks than that, but this is one of them. And a company that uh, I'm a shareholder in for a long time, from a guy called uh, Sander Hoeke, uh, who you really should meet. I think that's a meeting of minds. He's, he's about as crazy as you are. So that, that, that will... Same something? That, yeah, yeah, that's a match. He loves also extreme cars. <laughs> and um, you, sh you should actually do a ride with him. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to introduce you. So, but anyway, Sander has a company called Infocaster. It's a really nice, cool web design company where about 30 people work now. 
And um, I think 2014, he almost went bankrupt. And he survived. Um, and then he met Ricardo, because we brought Ricardo to the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And he said, wait a minute, I've survived my almost bankruptcy. And I, um, I'm doing now exactly the same things as I used to do before my nearly bankruptcy. So I may go bankrupt again because I didn't change. And then he saw Ricardo and he thought, wait a minute, I'm going to do it in the Semco style. So his last decision was not to make any decisions anymore. And he left everything to the team, which is amazing because um, the team suddenly also had to make all their decisions themselves and uh, also the financial decisions. And the beauty is that these people also didn't want to go bankrupt anymore. <laughs> yeah. Traditional leaders um, always are scared that if they leave the financial decisions totally to the team, that they will bankrupt the company and they will get the money themselves. Biggest, biggest mistake to think. I, yeah. I always, you always have this, and you probably get this a lot too, right? We can't let them make their own decisions. They will fuck it all up, right? They would just work what yeah. they like on, right? They would, yeah. they would not be responsible. Well, we have seen how responsible the leaders of the banks have been. Yeah, <laughs> and what, that's on one side, like show me your track record, oh, right? Oh, man. But the other yeah. thing is, actually what we found is that when you give colleagues the power to make decisions, they make very conservative, responsible decisions. They don't go exactly. big, disrupt, innovate. They actually go, I want to keep this job. I want to make it exactly. work, right? Yeah, and that's exactly what happened because um, what the team did was first taking care of the company and they invented a real nice term, it's called the drop debt ratio. Because they drop debt ratio? Drop debt ratio. They, what does they, that mean? That does mean how long can we survive without new customers? Okay. And in the whole history of Infocaster, there has been one period of four and a half months without new customers. So they said, well, let's take it on the safe side. Let's make sure there's always enough money in our bank account to survive half a year without new customers. Yeah. That's what they did. So they first took care of the company. Within one and a half year time, that the bank balance was really positive. And then they started thinking about expanding the team, um, having higher salaries. So first take care of the lifeline with mm -hmm. your organization, then take care of yourself. But the funny thing is, um, indeed, people who do this are more conservative. So. Um, on one hand, that brings down innovation a bit. On the other hand, uh, this creates the psychological safety to start experimenting a bit more. So it has two sides of it. On one hand, you see that um, the real shithole innovations not always appear in a Semco style type company. Um, but on the other hand, if you create the psychological safety, people start experimenting and they uh, create a culture of continuous improvement. So you get better every day a little bit. Yeah. And that's actually what most companies need most. Yeah. Not everyone should become the new Spotify or the new Apple. And even if you look at Apple, they had maybe seven shithole innovations. For the rest, it's improvements of existing products. This was a very interesting conversation when um, Clovis, Ricardo and I spoke in Brazil in Sao Paulo. And I asked them, what do you think are the drawbacks of a network organization, or a Semco style organization? And he said, he saw the internet coming mm -hmm. a long time ahead, because yeah. he has this, you know, this, I think it's, it's an entrepreneurial gift that you can see things coming that are not here yet. Yeah, yeah. And he said, I could not convince my crew to go that way. They didn't see it, they didn't believe it. So he says, and, and I let him, because I had this feeling that if they don't do it, if they don't bought into it, then there's no point in pushing them because they'll do yeah. it badly. Yeah. And he said, I, I think what I drew up from, from what he said was, um, disruptive innovation is harder for an organization that's built around our shared principles. Right? I think they're really good in this continuous uh, learning and, and yeah. really being invested in what you're doing. It still takes a crazy Ricardo from time to time to say, just believe me, it's that way. Yeah, right? true. Leadership is, uh, is uh, crucial. Um, and I really think Ricardo should have been an internet entrepreneur. He should yeah. have been. And I think he thinks himself also that he should have been an internet entrepreneur. His whole leadership style, his whole way of thinking um, is, is, is internet. Um, the trouble is he's now a little bit um, too late to be one of the real internet gurus. But he definitely is the source of inspiration for many leaders in the internet world. And that's something 
I rate actually a bit higher because that actually could help also existing organizations change into the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the, the magic a little bit or the holy grail of what we're trying to achieve is to say, can we have both, right? Can we combine the power of the Semco style network organization of people being fully invested in what they're doing, being on, often on the safe side of things mm -hmm. and still allow these pockets of innovation that might radically evolve the company and disrupt its own business model, right? I think that's it's a really interesting balance to strike in the company. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to some, one thing you said, safety, right? Because disruptive innovation never is safe. No, no. If you change everything at the same time in the company, um, then there is no psychological safety. So you, mood, you might even bring down the level of innovation. Yes. And if you first create psychological safety by creating some elements that are, are feeling all right for people, then they will perhaps start more experimenting. One of the guys, you know, we did a big project with T-Mobile in Holland mm -hmm. and the HR manager there, Mark Huppertz, he went to ABN Ambro. Mm -hmm. And one of the big things we started with was what we called the Big Bang. Yeah. Like we, we told the CEO, at some point, you have to do what we call out, kick out the ladder. Like yeah. you have to make a commitment to the new system. Yeah. And th that, that moment was they switched to the network software. Like yeah. from that moment on, work couldn't be ordered anymore, but colleagues had to make voluntary commitments. What do we work on? Yeah. Yeah. And he said, that for me is the Big Bang, right? If we, when we change that logic, then leaders have to change. They have to change their mindset completely yeah. from ordered work to yes. a Senko style, right? Are yeah. you convinced this is the right thing to do? Yeah. And um, then there are a few things we found out are very important. Okay. Um, uh, leaders need to change, but they also need to be aware of the fact that the hierarchy is more in the heads of the rest of the, of the organization than in the heads of the leaders. And leaders are very often energetic and a bit impatient. Um, it takes much longer for the hierarchy to disappear from the heads of the rest of the organization than to disappear from the heads of the leaders. And the leaders say, well, you know, I'm not the boss anymore. I'm now democratic. Why don't they understand? And then after half a year, they are disappointed. They say, well, you see, that whole Semco style doesn't work. And we, we're going to do it old style. And they, they pull. Handbrake. The if we had a handbrake, exactly. we would pull it. But there's no handbrake. There's no handbrake, no. Uh, yeah, this one here, but it's not, oh, yeah, it's okay. a button, it's, it's a, a button. It's, Press a, it's the a tiny, tiny yeah. handbrake. Yeah. So, and that's that's where things go wrong, then they lose their patience. Actually, I, I, I have said to managers who were in, in the Sam Costello situation, I said, just go fishing. Don't bother people with your presence and with your management stuff. Just go fishing and let people at ease, let them do what they're doing, trust them, facilitate them. And yes. Yeah. You know, but I, I'm completely with you. I found that there's two, there's two parts to this. The first one is, I think a lot of times leaders mistake doing nothing with self-organization. Yeah. Creating this safe environment, creating clarity about where you want to go and what you expect and what the financial means are, what the drop dead rate means. That's still important from the leader's perspective to say this is the business that we're trying to go towards. It's not, autonomy is not abandonment. You don't say, well, now you can do it on your own. By the way, you can do it agile. And then say, well, that didn't work. You, because you didn't do anything, right? You just exactly. let them alone. But and then the other yeah, thing is, yeah. when they get going, you have to stay the fuck out of the way. Yeah. That, I think that is so crucial that every story I've heard, like when I was the, the HR director, I needed to get out of my team's way because they, they did the same thing that David Marquet told me what happened on the submarine, just because he was the captain, they would look at him and exactly. they would go, what would he do? Oh, when he, when he twitches with the left eye, it means we should do this and that, right? Yeah. He started to guess what the captain wanted. And he said, I had to go and lock myself in the bathroom yeah. so that they had yeah. to make their own decisions, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, what we actually learned in the, during the course of the last uh, years that we are working with in Semco style, is that it's all about building a support system. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I told you that, that psychological safety is quite important um, and the, the thing is that it works both ways, also for the leaders and the leaders also need psychological safety yeah. and uh, having a self-organized company without support of the leaders is almost impossible. 
because without the leader who... Should we do it one more time? Yeah, one more. Uh, this is also an underestimated form of leadership, I think. Just yes. having a fast car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we should I have more, more discussions, like, instead of management by walking around, management by cruising around. Exactly, or racing around even. I'm sorry, yeah. support system. Yeah, no, I, I think I've one of the beautiful trainings that I developed with a friend of mine, Eric Krull. We developed in a canoe, both in a canoe, on steady oh, water. Given the balance. We did our meetings in the canoe. Yes. In the sunshine, on the water, and it was amazing. So doing something else than just sitting on a desk is anyway very good for good conversations. Yes. Walking, canoeing, racing around. Yes. Yeah. But so anyway. what would you do yeah. from the Semco side perspective well, to in, in, in yeah. enable that support Look, system? I, I took my phone for a reason out of my pocket because okay. most leaders that think that they, if they let go in the organization, think this will happen. Yeah. It will fall, it will break, it will, you know, they yeah. think they will totally lose control. So, but what they do, they, they, um, they make the mistake that they, uh, how do you say that, uh, they, 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 they want to be in control but in fact they are controlling, that's something completely different. So what we learned, that someone who just lets go, loses control because he's not in connection with his organization anymore. Mm -hmm. But this is also letting go. Mm -hmm. Build a support Offering. system yep. and let go. Mm -hmm. And if you make sure that you're in connection with each other and that we have alignment in the team, and uh, we know from each other what the goals are and what, what, the, what the values are, what the talents are, and we can help each other um, doing the work, but also help each other becoming the best version of yourself, then you build a support system. And that's also a way of letting things go. And this is actually being in control without controlling. And that's what the Samco style is all about. And well, this is, I, I think, the hardest part for me, why I needed Angela so desperately yeah. at Resource for Humans was I almost came from a different planet in, in the sense that when my dad worked at HP, it, it was a safe environment. People loved their work. They were all very much self-organized. So I had a dad who came home. He was positive. He was full of energy. Yeah. He loved his work. So I, for me, work was something great. Yeah. Right? Not like my, my, my schoolmates whose dad would come home and they'd be like, don't talk to me. I'm yeah. tired. I'm burned out. Right? Yeah, terrible. So for me, it was, isn't that natural? But for most people, the 99%, it would not be natural no. to be like no. this, right? Yeah, well, I, I always had the opinion that work is perhaps something you spend 40% of your total life uh, with, you know, maybe even more. I think it's roughly 40% of your life you spend with work, you know? It's not many people work eight hours, always more in a day. So from the time you're awake, a very big part you spend with work or at home even thinking about work. Yeah. Why should that be awful? That's why we say let, our mission is to make work awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, it, it's very strange that, for example, millennials that enter the labor market now, they have been uh, trained to choose a study in a very complex environment with lots, lots of possibilities of studies, subjects, uh, topics, uh, whatever. So it's complex to choose and then they have to um, uh, decide themselves totally how to divide their time um, during the study. So no yeah. one says them, well, you go to school now. You know. No, they choose their time completely themselves. And in the time that they, the agenda they fill completely themselves, they are working on and thinking about high big high value topics like uh, strategic things or how to improve society, how to stop pollution, how to whatever. They, they think about big strategic topics. So they are completely prepared for the world that we are living in at the moment. But then they start working and they enter an organization and they have to forget everything what they learned because they have to learn how it works in our company. No, no, we've been doing this for 70 years like that and you should behave. So we kill all the talent of these young people, we kill all the skills that they have learned because we think that we, the way we did it the last hundred years yes. is the right way. But that well, thing... And I think there's, there's, a, there's a reason why people like Ricardo invest in schools as well, right? Yeah. Because they said, I don't want to have to retrain them, I will actually nope. start like this. But I had a, I had a huge insight also. Yeah. I grew up with the book, my favorite book was called The Green Cloud. 
Yeah. I think in English it's called The Last Man on Earth or The Last Man Alive. Yeah. And it's by a guy called A.S. Neal. He had a school in England, a boarding school called Summerhill. Have you heard about Summerhill? No. It's like an anti-authoritarian uh, school. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was fantastic because like, you know, kids didn't have to go to school. They, they, they could just stay out of the classroom unless they were convinced mm -hmm. they could learn something in class, right? There was no system at all. Yep. And it didn't work. And why? Like people came out and they would, they would be very confused and then lost in the world. Okay. So the, the lesson from this Summerhill thing was that you still need a clear framework, mm -hmm. right? Um, complete anarchy is not autonomy. No. And that, that was a huge learning for them that yeah. um, even, even Semco had rules, right? It had, yeah. it had found its own rules. <sighs> And that's the important thing. Nobody imposed a rule on you. They asked, does this rule make sense? What exactly. rules would you implement? Exactly. But then they committed to the rules. Exactly, because these are their rules exactly. instead of the rules of someone else. Yeah. When you establish rules, you have to give them an expiration date. There's a certain time when you have to go look at the rules again and say, do they still apply? Because the world has moved on, you know, the, are these rules that we've set still serving the value that we looked for? Yeah, or do we need yeah. to adapt them, throw them out, or we keep them? Yes, yes. That's interesting. I, uh, I've been working in uh, the education uh, world uh, for a while. I was involved in many commercial training institutes and also non commercial I have a feeling there's, a, there's very few things that you haven't done yet, right? Well, there are a few, but that's F perhaps fighter not pilot. for... Uh, fighter pilot is still out there, right? Yeah, yeah still, still on the list. Yeah, we'll do yeah. submarine captain now, so we can add that to your yeah, list. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's one definitely on my list. Yeah. So, um, no, but I've been um, working, I love training, I love education, that, that's, that's what my, my, my core competence and my, yes. my core business actually is. But I met a guy, working with him, his name is uh, Anton uh, Busselman in the Netherlands, a visionary of education. He had his training institute certified with ISO, ISO 9000 9, mm -hmm. something. But what he wanted, he, he was actually against it, but the shareholders asked him to do it. And he said, wait a minute. I don't like the certification because it, it may, may block innovation. So he has been talking with the ISO organization and said, Whoa. <laughs> he said, I want to certify the change. Mm -hmm. So what he did was certifying that he would every year um, skip redundant rules and add new rules to the certification. So he certified nice. his constant love change it. process. Yeah. And that's so visionary. Absolutely. I love it. Tell yeah. you, okay, we had a a workshop the past two days and it was super hard that in, in a video game company you have a game to make mm -hmm. you know when it's done yeah. right? and that was so important for what we did because it gave us an end goal always that game ships exactly we, we called it the definition of done right we could measure did the gamers who bought the game love our game yeah, yeah. and it gave us a very different metric to go by in the company whereas most companies say well, we have an ongoing metric of make money and, and, and you know, this year it's 20 billion or whatever it might be, you know, but there was no real feeling of when is it done? When, no, when do no. we achieve, when do we celebrate? When do we know if it was a failure? Yeah, exactly, right? exactly, yeah. And these things you have to define. And if, um, if you can manage to, to get um, goals that not only are good for the company, but also for the people, that people can become the best version of themselves. Yeah. And if, if you as an organi organization or as a leader can be an intermediate between people and their dreams, then you'll become successful. That will boost your organization. And that's, that's actually the type of support system we like to build. Do you know, I told you that with every leader in a car, we had one memorable quote. Yeah. What did you just say? The leader is the intermediary between... People and their dreams. Between people and their dreams. There you yeah. go. Because yeah. I thought, you know, we have a safety because we went for out for drinks yesterday. Yeah. And we, we had the... Which was the quote that you had from, from me, which was the... Um, it was a good quote, but I forgot it already. You don't... You, uh, you I look it up because I, I written it down. Structures something, right? No, no. It was... Um, it, yeah. It's easier to rebel against structures than to create one yourself. But that's quite visionary from and you. That, and that was yeah. that was pretty good for yeah. an evening quote. But I think this one for me was better. Yeah, a leader is an intermediary between people, people and their and dreams. dreams. Yeah, and whether these people are your employees or your colleagues or your partners or your customers, that doesn't really matter. But if you always do everything to help people completing their dreams, well, we had a, an, an important insight yesterday that I just want to mention. 
Mm -hmm. And this is a shout out to my wonderful partner in life and in, in business, Angela um, Pepper. Well, listen well, uh, Angela. She, she has been the intermediary between me and my dream. Without her, I'd probably be in jail. I wouldn't be in this beautiful office that we're going in now because I would have not filled out some necessary forms for the tax and <laughs> they would have taken yeah, me into yeah. prison. So yeah. I think this is really important that we have these people who can act as intermediaries for us. Yeah. And probably complementary, right? Maybe there's some things where I enable her dream as uh, being an entrepreneur and a mom, but yeah. maybe it's worth highlighting what that is, right? And yeah. I think you said the same thing about Fernanda for yeah. Ricardo yeah. and for yourself. Right? Yeah, my own wife, you say, you, you, you know her. And she um, actually, my, my worst decision was, was a company called Yendi that I founded. Um, and actually, it was the predecessor of YouTube. And my intuition actually said that I shouldn't do it. So my inner voice told me, Arco, don't do it. But there was also another voice who told me, Arco, don't do it. It was Jose. And uh, actually, I didn't listen. So my intuition and my wife told me not to do it. And I still did it. So I lost all my money. I lost my health and in the burnout. And so everything actually basically went wrong. Um, so my really tip is now, for specifically for men who are listening to this, to this uh, program, um, if your wife and your intuition tell you not to do things, just don't do it. Captain Arco, please, yeah. to the captain's chair. Okay. I'll, I'll help you a little bit. Oh, I'll take off my coat. That's take, what captain's Take off your coat, sir. Yeah. This is a submarine, informal. Okay. Please grab your yeah. what is this? controllers. Is this? Ah, Those, those are, are your hands. hands. My hands, wow. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Glasses off or on? Glasses should stay on. So, okay. hold on, let me try to make this as friendly to your air as possible. Yeah. Good, sir? That's perfect. Okay. Wow. Okay, hold on. I hear the water. All right, so we are on the USS Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. Sticking my ass on the camera here. So, what we'll do is this is the experience how we get people to believe in the leader leader environment, this networked environment, right? Mm -hmm. By playing through David Marquet's story, yes. essentially. So what I will do is we will take a mini submarine to the Santa Fe, mm -hmm. and I'll play the intro for you now. Yeah. OK? okay. So okay. goggles on and hold on. Yeah. I'm on board now. Somebody wave to me. There she is, the Santa Fe. So Arco, what we're telling people that when they come into the office here, yes. When you go up the stairs at the very beginning of the building, mm -hmm. all the way to our office, that's how long the Santa Fe is in real life. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah? 120 yeah. meters round about. Yeah. It's a huge, huge yeah, ship. Yeah. ship huh? what, what we're doing now is we're having a coffee at 100 meters deep in the USS Santa Fe. That's pretty cool, no? Yeah, amazing. Huh? No, but the, the idea of this, Arco, is that what we found was, you know, you, you talked about safety. And we found that a lot of leaders, especially boards and the decision makers, were reluctant to go for a network organization or a Semco-style organization because they didn't feel safe. They had not experienced something mm -hmm. like this. It's what you showed me with the iPhone, right? They felt it yeah. was dropping it yeah. rather than holding it, yeah, right? Exactly. And they were not sure if their teams would handle this responsibly. So what we did was we said, why don't give, give them a virtual experience of what would it feel like if you worked like this, in a very cinematic, awesome environment where David actually experienced it like this, right? David Marquet. And they come out of this and it's eye-opening to them that they go, all right, I understand what you mean by giving control to the people on the submarine. I have to provide the clarity. I have to say, we're going for Alpha One. Now, what would you do to get us to Alpha One? Get out of the harbor, yeah, I would yeah. say, at this depth, right? But it really, it's not the classical training where you would tell somebody, hey, I show you a video, or let me show you a framework, or I show you uh, a testimonial from somebody. No, play it, live it. And then you come out and you have an experience with it, and you said, well, this was scary, this was difficult, but it's, um, it's a very different environment to conduct trainings in, because you're there, right? When you, you have the goggles on, you forget. You forget. It's yeah. amazing, right? Yeah. I didn't realize you were sitting there, actually. I, I had no idea. I love it. I, I really, um, what I really would like to do is uh, also use it for, for, uh, for one of our services. So my wrap to this is, anybody out there listening to this, get in touch with Semco Style, because I, I, I can't 
overestimate, uh, overstressed us enough. When I did this for the first time as an HR director to take an organization from a normal hierarchy to a self-organizing system, we did so many mistakes we could have avoided if we had some guidance. I think there are some things, some scratches you have to get yourself, but there are some that are easily avoidable. For me, it would have been awesome if we had had Resourceful Humans and Semco style back then, but most importantly, I had this, I had an aspirational leader out there and I, I couldn't reach Clovis because he only spoke Portuguese, yeah, yeah, so he yeah, couldn't yeah. respond to me at the time. But it would have been awesome to have you guys back then to say, come on, let's, we'll show you how. Right? Yeah. yeah, and we're also learning on the job. <laughs> so because the how uh, is actually typically that you define together. So we never know exactly the how, but what we can bring in is the psychological safety to together define the how and the what. So that, that's our role. And that's, uh, that makes it not always easy because uh, we don't have the, the role plan and the, the, the five steps to more self-organization because we define it on the job. And actually we are successful when, suppose we would, would help the, uh, a company we go together. When, when are you successful? Well, we are successful if after two years the customer thinks, well, why on earth actually I needed those guys? Because it's so simple. If we achieve that, that then we have done our job right. So our best lock-in is to lock out. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I told you that last time we met that we actually changed our pricing, our, our um, cost, cost our, our billing structure, because we would always we were in this classical project management kind of uh, setup before we did technology to say, well, we'll bill you for the module or the segment or the training or the, the time or something like this, right? But we found that this was really it wasn't in the spirit of what we were trying to achieve. So what we told the client was, look, you'll get a readiness part, which is you'll get exposure to the tools, to, to, to thought leaders who have done this, uh, entrepreneurs, you, we, you'll run through the dive, you'll get an experience, and then you'll make a decision if you want to go on this journey. If you do that, you'll pay for the whole journey up front. It shows your commitment, it shows you have to talk to your stakeholders, it shows you're serious about it because you put yeah. money behind it. Now the interesting thing is that once you've made that investment, our interest is to make you autonomous as quickly as possible yeah, because exactly. our margin will be bigger. Exactly. And success is you don't need us anymore. We're not looking for follow-up. We're not looking to build more man hours. We're yeah. looking to make you successful and get yeah. the fuck out. Right? Exactly. Every and they get that. Yeah. It's sometimes it's a huge fight yeah, with the procurement I, department. Exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. But it, the, you immediately, even from the billing structure, you get in the mindset of it's different. Yeah. Definitely, and that's, uh, that's the whole thing, because uh, we should also stay out of these old-fashioned patterns. Uh, we hate consulting firms that lock themselves in and use that as a means to write as much hours as possible, because if, if we would do that, we would not be loyal to our own vision that self-organization yes. is something you do yourself. Yes. We can help you getting started, but you have to do it yourself. So that's our mission, to coach you, you, the customers, people, to do it themselves. And some of them just read the book of Ricardo or see one video of you or me and just do it themselves. And other people need a bit more help and then we, we coach. So if we could join forces there, Heiko, then uh, I tell you, let, I let's deep dive in this, I would say. The definition of done for me is in a year from now, Semco Style uses resourceful human software. We go out and we bring the dive experience to a shitload of companies that want to do it but are too afraid to do it and really turn it around to say it's not like this. It's like that. Exactly. Let's do it. Arco, it's been amazing, an absolute amazing. pleasure, my friend. So from here on out, we go deep. The pleasure is mine. I'll. Uh <laughs> <laughs> It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. I'm so energized from this episode. 100% inspiration, 100% entrepreneurship, 100% energy. Whoa. It was so cool to see Heiko and Arco going ping pong and then changing their ideas. And at the same time, being so focused. What does it take for a successful transformation? And it's two things. As a leader, you need to take a conscious decision 
I want to lead differently. And then the second piece comes with, you need to take your organization along because just because there's a switch in the head of the leader, it doesn't change the employee's behavior. So you also need that second step. You need to fundamentally change the organizational setup and reinforce it. So I loved it at the end when Arco was in the VR dive, had the goggles on and experienced something personal for him as a leader where he could feel, oh my God, that's different. And then if you merge that with further technology and say like, okay, this is how I can ensure that my organizational setup is different. I simply loved how those two components came together. So I can't wait to see more of that energy and I'm excited what will happen with Semco Style and Resourceful Human. Thank you for being with us. Don't miss the next episodes. They're going to be awesome. And keep your energy level up.